Hello folks and welcome to the first episode of It's Cheap But Does It Sound Good? In this little series I take a look at cheap vintage microphones that are easily obtained and don't cost you a fortune. The first victim of this series, the Akai ADM40. So a while back I bought this microphone uh, for 10 bucks on a second-hand marketplace. I didn't have any info in on it except for one or two forum posts. Uh, one uh, poster even going as far as to compare it to an SM57 but with, with a more flat frequency response. So as I play much more acoustic guitar lately, the first thing I did of course was try it out on my acoustic guitar. Did it sound good? Nah, it was okay, uh, the s audio itself uh, was pretty defined and clear, but the s signal level was very low, I uh, really had to strum my guitar to uh, get a proper uh, audio level on this. So it quickly became obvious to me that this microphone uh, simply isn't that sensitive and uh, needs a pretty loud sound source to actually get a decent level out of this. And uh, if you don't have that, you need to put a lot of gain on it and that brings forth all sorts of issues like a low signal to noise ratio, etc. This thing's been lying on my desk for a while now and didn't know what to do with it until I got the brilliant idea to use it on something more loud. How about a snare drum? So luckily it was just before band practice, so I grabbed all my gear and while well, my bandmates were having a break, I hooked everything up and started recording uh, both a snare drum as well as a guitar amp. And luckily uh, our guitarist uh, was so nice to help me out with some uh, fantastic guitar playing. And well, here are the results. Now for the recording itself, I used a Zoom H4. There's no EQ or compression or anything. This is just a dry sound from both the snare drum as the guitar amp. I tried different positions for both um, and experimented a little to see what kind of sounds I could get out of this thing. And to be honest, I was pretty surprised. Unfortunately, I forgot my camera, uh, so I drew some pretty pictures in Photoshop, so even a bass player I can understand it. Wait, I am a bass player. So I will note here that uh, our drummer has a dampening uh, ring on his snare, so his natural snare sound is already very short and tight. It's not because of the microphone. So I did six tests in total, trying different angles and positions, both on the top and bottom of the snare drum. In this first test, I put the mic about 4 cm from the edge at a steep angle of 85 degrees. This is what it sounds like. Now, I rotated the mic so it was an, at an angle of around 45 degrees. Here's what that sounds like. To compare it in a more extreme way, I put the microphone at 90 degrees and pointed at the edge of the snare drum. Now of course such a position seems rather weird, but it gave me a good chance to compare the mic to this more traditional position. This is where the mic is positioned at the edge and it's roughly pointing at the center of the snare drum. This is what that sounds like. Now for the bottom of the snare drum. Here I put the microphone near the edge of the snare, pointed at the snare mat itself at a distance of around 2 to 3 centimeters. And that sounded like this. Thank you. 
And as a final test, I move the microphone as close to the center of the snare as possible at slightly more distance, but still pointed at the snare mat. And finally, I combined a couple of the samples from the top and bottom recordings to simulate a two microphone recording and ah, that sounds pretty sweet. Have a listen. So as for the snare drum, I'm pretty impressed with the results I got out of this thing, especially considering this was done in a pretty rushed fashion. I only had the uh, practice break to uh, do all this. Um, it handles sound pressure levels really well, it gives a good clean signal at around minus 6 dB on both recordings. Uh, so I didn't really need any gain or whatsoever. Again, this is completely unedited in any way. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna experiment with this thing more on drums, maybe as an overhead, maybe uh, as a tom mic. Um, yeah, and I definitely want to get a second one to uh, try to um, simultaneously as a, a top and bottom snare mic, because uh, combining those uh, signals uh, gives a pretty decent sound. Not bad at all. So, like I said before, I also tried this thing on a guitar amp. Um, more precisely, a PV6505 Plus. And, well, here's what uh, the results are. Okay, the guitar amp. For these tests, I used the traditional positions for recording an amp. First up is the microphone dead center on the speaker up close to the grill. <laughs> Next, I moved it to the edge of the speaker cone. the other side of the cone, again near the edge. This is a good example on how sound can differ at different areas of a speaker cone. In other words, always experiment with your microphone position. For the next recording, I placed the microphone dead center again, but this time off axis, on an axis of 45 degrees. Here's what this sounded like. <laughs> Thank you. 
Lastly, I aim the mic dead center again, but this time at around 40 centimeters distance to get a more roomy sound. To my surprise, it was actually still very defined and direct. <laughs> So finally I had to gather a quick mix of different recordings to see what it sounds, would sound like in a stereo field, like a more typical mix. I also mixed in some of the snare drum samples uh, to give a more complete image of how they would sound together. And uh, well, have a listen, let me know what you think. <laughs> So, the final verdict, well, for the 10 bucks this thing has cost me, I gotta say I'm pretty impressed. Does it hold up to an SM57? Nah, I don't think so. I don't have an SM57 at the moment to compare it to, but uh, when I do, I'll definitely uh, do a little comparison, because uh, yeah, I'm pretty surprised. However, this thing is a tenth of the price of an SM57 and I've seen them go for even cheaper. So it's definitely a, something, quite a good bang for your buck. Um, and especially try to find a uh, cheap microphone that can handle the SPL of a snare drum or a guitar amp like this one does. So if you're a piss poor hobbyist or musician like me <laughs> and uh, you uh, you need a microphone for uh, well uh, recording uh, a sick, uh, sound source with a high SPL well you should definitely try this thing they're easily to get uh, I've seen them on eBay and also on the local marketplace here uh, by the dozens um, so definitely try it out however if you do have the money for say an SM57 Go get an SM57, of course. I mean, that thing handles anything you throw at it. And you probably get a very nice recording out of it too. So, that was it for this episode. If you have any ideas, uh, comments or suggestions uh, for the next episode or this episode, I'll happily hear them. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Stay metal. Yeah.